Welcome to another beautiful episode here in Vital Signs and Voices for New Earth. And what can I say? What would be a better being, a better mermaid to, sh to, sh to share with us today and shine with us than Mopua in Hawaii? And we had a little chat before and just feeling so much more that connectedness. And what we want to bring to you today is actually something very special. We want to talk about, in a way, the illusion of the empty cup and the truth of the full cup. And we're going to weave it together because we can in sound and song and bring us back to the ancestors of Hawaii, the Mu Hawaiians, that, of course, beautiful Mopua is already fully exposed to, and I'm just a little bit connected. So... Mopua, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. Mahalo, much, much better, right? Epo mai kai and mahalo, yes. Blessings here now, and thank yeah. you. And please, <laughs> mahalo. Mopua, tell us a little bit about yourself. Mm, thank you. Um, so, I am blessed to be a practitioner of Hawaiian culture. And I myself am of mixed tribal heritage and European heritage. I feel if you go back far enough, we all have indigenous or earth loving harmonious roots. So I am a world citizen, as my mother taught me to say. And I'm blessed to live on this island that the ancestors named Moku Okeave. Many people know it as Hawaii Island or Big Island. And I am here now with you, experiencing one of my favorite things in this two-legged embodiment of this earth walk life dream, <laughs> which is to connect through the heart and to explore what it means to be embodied right now at this very potent in these very potent times and so a little bit more about me is I'm a self-proclaimed multi-dimensional mermaid <laughs> you mentioned that already Patrick and um, what that means is that I've I've recognized some qualities about water and the dimensions of existence, including the dream time, that are very natural for me. And so each time that I connect with the mermaid part of myself, who, you know, mermaids, we tend to love to sing and love to swim and love to brush our hair in the sunshine as it dries from our ocean frolicking <laughs> these are all things that <laughs> that really do um feed my spirit and um and i'm also a practitioner of massage and breath work and dance and chanting and connecting in ways that help us heal our hearts that may transcend the paradigm of society in terms of like psychiatric assistance or those kinds of things. I'm a, I'm a healer from the heart re who recognizes that I can only help another being heal to the degree I've healed myself because that's how much my vision is open to. So I'm here to open my vision and my ears to more possibilities and to sound the bell that while things might look like it's all going to hell, we really have a chance to be heaven right here, right now. So thank you for allowing me to be heaven and share this new earth with you uh, and all of your listeners. Mahalo, mahalo. Yes, I'm sure our audience feels the same way. To have you here is just so, such an incredible blessing. And I want to pick up, apart from you are so beautifully sharing with us, the service that you are of to the world, to this time. 
And I really love how you use also embodiment because for me, embodiment is so important. The heart healing is the first step, but when the heart is healed, the heart is the connection to the cosmos. And then we can truly <laughs> embody. So this yes. is very much what I'm all about. And the new earth and the heart living comes from there. But as you said, if the heart is not healed, nothing really happens because we can only come in oneness when we can truly heal the heart and allow the heart to be what it truly is. Mm. Yes. Quite mystic thing. Absolutely. It's the transmitter or maybe even the transducer of the most powerful force in the universe in my book of life, which is what our Hawaiian people call aloha and what many people would say love, amor, you know, so many words for this energy and even some people will say god is love yes right so the most highest 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 we we have the capacity to touch it with our heart yes. and and to share it yes it's so beautiful for me to get always new pieces new visions new horizons of understanding through the heart how we are now sharing so Let's get into it. What is that thing? Sharing from the empty cup and sharing from the full cup. What comes through? Mm. Share it with us. Thank you so much. This is such an honor. Um, so each of us here, because we have multidimensional listeners, right? There's people who in our future are listening right now. And we're now in their past, but we're all here right now. So I just invite each of us right here, right now to just notice where your body is right now in space, in time, and recognize yourself as a vessel, like a cup. And in that recognition, just feeling where your body is supported on this beautiful earth of ours. <sighs> you may notice that there may be parts that feel full and parts that feel empty. And in answer to your prompt of this empty versus full cup, just in this moment, as we take a breath in together, and we breathe out together. I just invite us each to ask the question, what if I'm already full of what is truly me? And what if with this next breath, I could actually release and empty myself of anything that I might have thought was me, but actually isn't. So let's take a breath for emptying. <sighs> Just letting go and dropping any of the weights that we might be carrying, thinking that that is how to be us. And what the Mu ancestors share with me is that though I sometimes feel empty and I try to keep giving from that empty cup, like maybe to prove myself or to win love as a child, to, to, to earn my reason for existing to 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 exist actually to avoid that existential terror of if i don't do right and i don't behave right i won't be cared for i won't belong and therefore i won't exist i might just dissipate and all that that i thought made me empty what if i just were able to and we together in our breathing breathing Oh, could recognize that all love is coming to us right now without the need to do a single thing. And that just by being here, we are worthy of love. And what if just by being here, we are love and therefore we're giving love. So that idea of emptiness can completely disappears except for maybe the kind of emptiness that allows you to receive infinitely 
all that is meant to be. And I know my words, you know, they, they make sense or not make sense to your thinking mind, but I thank you for allowing yourself to simply feel, ah, what if I don't have to strive to be full? Because just by being, I'm, I'm complete. And when I really allow myself to receive that truth, then I have infinite love to share with whom I want, when I choose, in the amount that I choose, and not when I'm not choosing or feeling that impulse to give. These are all very important concepts to me in the, the idea of fullness. And it's the brain that has been trained by many of us raised in a fault-finding society that embraces such concepts as original sin or these kinds of things where we start off being told that we're wrong that is a mind shift and and the Mu ancestors share with me that our our work if there is work is to simply allow to re ourselves to release what is not the deepest heart felt truth of what is not in alignment with love. So I thank you for the question and each of you here for just feeling that whatever came up for you, just know it's okay. It's not about getting to some outcome. No. Just thank you for feeling and being. Mahalo. Mahalo for all this aloha, for all this wisdom. April, my cousin. And, and I've shared with you, I also have this connection to Mu and to the Hawaiians. And when you speak, it, it's like opening up a perpetual source of being, of living, that has been closed for me. And as you speak, the truth is coming within me. And it's so beautiful to share that with our audience. Maybe the illusion of the empty cup that we have been made believe that we have. Maybe this empty cup is actually the cup to receive, as you said. And I feel we often forget that. This is not about taking, this is about being able to receive. And for me, this is also the divine feminine that we all have in our own balance, whether we are men or women or whatever we want to define ourselves. And what comes to me when you're sharing this beautiful, beautiful truth and wisdom, that uniqueness that we have, that love that we have, can never be empty. That's exactly that's exactly it. And one thing that we spoke of before we started recording, I believe, is this, um, this idea that I was using the, the cup as an analogy for the, the message of the day is what is true giving? What is true giving? And to me, as I do my best to strive to be this and learn it all the time is that true giving doesn't come when I feel empty and therefore try to do something to get love in return to fill my cup. But rather true love is when I, it's not giving at the expense of myself or twisting or compromising parts of my truth so that I'll be accepted and love and receive that and try to fill my cup that way. It's rather true giving is recognizing all that I'm already filled with because it's just my nature. And then responding when there are others like yourself who ask me for something that I have to share that is of my nature. And so this, I felt that was important to share because there are ways in which the analogy of being empty is a positive in terms of receiving, like you mentioned, the masculine and the feminine energies, how they work together, right? And the 
the empty I was originally speaking of, though, is that feeling of a void that I have grown up with so much of my life has been about learning how to fill the void with love. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in total gratitude and agreement for for what you're sharing and I just am speaking to those people who might be listening and saying but it is okay to be empty and then full and empty and then full again and absolutely there is that truth and when I tune into through you and your reflection Patrick who I truly am I feel infinitely full because I just tap into this love source that is constantly flowing and so that is what I choose to give today on this earth. And, and sometimes that might look like not talking to anyone, you know, and just being alone in my little jungle home with my animals and, you know, um, my plants. And, and that actually is giving. So if you're listening to this right now and you're alone or you're feeling that aloneness, just know that when you're at peace and in loving place inside yourself, or even when you're in the hardest place in the world, but willing to keep receiving and breathing and being here, you are giving. You're giving to each of us here also in this experience of being alive. So just truly, as, as simple as it may sound, just by breathing, mm -hmm. we are each medicine to each other. We are all medicine people and we are giving our medicine by existing. And so I hope I'm not overstepping in terms of talking too much. I'm still learning how to be interviewed and I just, that's very exciting for me. <laughs> oh, I call it a heart dialogue. I don't call it an interview. I don't call it a discussion. I call it a heart dialogue. And this is exactly what we're experiencing. We lost your picture for a moment. I'm sure you're coming back. Thank you. Yes, I will return. I realized that still my phone wants more energy. We are so powerful that my phone needs more electricity. So yeah, I'm plugging happens. that in now. <laughs> I want to use that time to come back to that empty cup that, of course, can also be that empty cup that you have spoken to. And sometimes this empty cup has to do with the emptiness that we feel, but also the emptiness that we feel when, when we are forced or when we are asked to give something that we don't have instead of being able to give what's natural to us. And, and this is very much what you were talking about too, having that flow and, and I feel, and this is also that, that, that power of saying, the choice, the power of choice to say, well, you know, I really don't have that. But if you want something else, I have that and I can share that and give that to you. Absolutely. And so many of us as children, we didn't have that choice. No. Because our brain was not developed. We weren't even in that stage of ability to think in a beta way of choosing. And, and so we learn it, we get to learn it now. And, and we get to um, perhaps exercise these choices for the first time. Exactly. Because we're operating on this automatic conditioning and programming and all the things that are just how we as humans uh, develop our, our patterns. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and it's so powerful. Them. And how we're now breaking them and coming back. Yes, and to the wisdom of the ancestors, whether it's Mu or something else, but also mm -hmm. we're coming back to nature. And not only the nature that we both have outside, but the nature of our whole being, multidimensionally. Absolutely, yes. I pololé, yes indeed, wow. yes indeed. And the ancestors of Mu, um, you know, I, I had, a, there's a very beautiful teaching from a dear man that we both know of in, um, on the island of Maui, Keone, who works with the, the fern medicine yes. and, and is 
a bloodline ancestor. I have a spiritual lineage to move. Um, and Keone said something so beautiful. And my ancestors are saying, make sure you say that, that all of us come from nature so all of us come from truth and all of us come from love so right now in this society and what goes on in the world some people because of their genetic heritage and things that their past blood ancestors have done are carrying this sense of guilt and weight and and while it's wonderful to want to make corrections correct the course the guilt shame and blame has no place on this new earth whatsoever because as they keep saying to me if you go back far enough in all our family trees you find the those who knew how to love and work in harmony with the earth and so that is what we can all then bring forward so when we're speaking of this ancestral lineage and wisdom of Mu that I also um, I would say I put myself more in your category that I'm I'm a baby learning and remembering um, and then there are people like Keone who carry this lineage um, and I'll get to what he said um, that I feel is really powerful is that as I understand and remember his words he said everyone is welcome here with Aloha to these islands and so i'm going to extend that to if you feel a connection to move you are welcome here and 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 no one has to give you permission to acknowledge your connection to move to what patrick and i are sharing whatever resonates with you it resonates because there's a place in you for it to ping off of so it is already a part of you if it resonates it might be a part you've yet to explore to polish to blossom but you can trust that when something resonates and he said so everyone is welcome in a physical sense to these islands of aloha mind you i'm not saying please come here we have quite it just you'll understand as i go forward <laughs> <laughs> everyone is welcome here with aloha and whether you stay depends on you on your behavior, on if you are of aloha, if you can, it takes a lot to live a life of love, whatever word you put on it. If you're nodding your head, you know it takes courage and and humility and and you're a warrior, you're a you're rainbow warrior if you're here dedicated to love on this earth. And so I would extend that to this entire earth and also to this understanding of Mu which many may not know is the continent that is below the ocean mostly right now, whose mountain peaks are the islands of Bali and Hawaii. There may be some other ones also, but it's essentially this, this, this continent that very little of it is actually seen now above the ocean, but that many of us feel a memory of and a promise that we made through song that as we saw that this was sinking and much of the knowledge and the crystalline understandings and all these things were going to go to sleep for a while on this earth, we sang a song promising to return at the time when the world, the earth would be ready and the people would be ready to remember these teachings. So if you're wondering what is Mu? then that's my simplest explanation. And so I'm going to extend Keone's quote to say, if you feel called to new earth teachings, whether we call them by the name of Mu or any of your ancestral heritage, there are veins of truth that run through it all. And if you feel called to it, you are welcome here. Like you're welcome as a member of new earth. Yes. Whether you stay and be heaven, as we all have the capacity to be, that word the ancestors gifted me with is ho'o kalani, ho'o kalani, to be kalani, the, the heavens. If you stay in the earth, is up to each of us. It's up to me if I stay in heaven or not. 
because that has to do with how I respond to everything that's coming my way. And to whether I'm going to sing my heart song, like I'm excited to do with Patrick today, to or sing or sing other songs that maybe are less harmonious and don't really have a place in this, this new earth heaven that we can all co-create. And I don't think it's a choice now and then forever you're stuck. I think it's a choice. They tell me it's a momentary choice how much love we're willing to hold and be and, and give and exchange. Yes. Yeah. Mahalo is, is the... We all have it. Yes, we all have it. Mahalo is the perfect conclusion to everything that you have said. It is so interesting. I lived in Indonesia for so many years and I felt that connection. I lived in... New Zealand and, and I have this connection. I was in Hawaii in Oahu for four weeks presenting at a, at a conference so many years ago. But it doesn't matter. I have this this connection and, and it's so beautiful. And really I feel it's about all of us. Dare to yes. dare to go into that full cup of your uniqueness and allow that resonance, whether it's mu or anything else. It doesn't mm. matter. You are welcome in new earth and yes. so let's chat and we just happen to come together you and i through being ourselves and following that calling of our mu connection to exactly. find each other as brother and sister so yes um you, each of us as you follow your uniqueness your song you will find more and more. Maybe you're maybe you're a mermaid, or maybe you're a unicorn, or maybe you're a, a pegasi or a winged horse. Excellent. Who knows? But keep letting your heart wings spread, and we will all like come together like a crystal grid. Exactly. Each with our uniqueness. Exactly, and each with our connectedness with each other. And of course, in the Big Island, you also have Pele, the beautiful goddess of the volcanoes. Yes. And I feel that's another, she's coming into me now. I've been working with her before, but she's coming into me now and says, I'm joining you in this song. Oh, thank you. Yes, mahalo. mahalo. Mm -hmm. Gratitude is that word, mahalo. Gratitude, appreciation, and admiration. Yeah. Yeah. Mahalo. Let's see what the heart wants to sing. Coming together yes. in that beautiful nature of Mu, the harmony with all cycles of life, of the cosmos, mm. and of this beautiful earth of our heart. Mm -hmm. And Mupua, please make the start, be the one who births this song, and I will join oh. you. My Kai, good job. Okay. And I, along with that, the, those of you listening, our our soul family out there, add your add your song as you feel called or listen if that feels best. Just know your, your sounds are welcome too. Right here, right now, in this here now moment. <laughs>
there's so many more songs to be sung. <coughs> Mahalo. April, my you're welcome. Let's be here now. Yeah. And if you are listening here, if you're watching, you are soul family. And we're very grateful to have you here today. As we are coming together. And, and you might be of the two-legged variety. Yes. Or you might be of the four-legged variety. Yes. Or winged ones or finned ones. You're all here, family. <laughs> <laughs> Soul family here. So as we were singing, I could not always hear your sounds. So that was interesting. <laughs> I wonder if you... Yes. So I think that the, the technical the technical gods had their own ideas for that and yet and i, I look know, forward yeah and yet i know it reaches where it needs need, needs to reach and yet this is just the beginning of our song of war yes yes so would you bless us with a song from your soul about the things that we're discussing today giving from your full cup and this beautiful connection that you are strengthening and growing with your Mu ancestry, brother? Yes, sister. I'm, I'm blessed and honored. Honore maho anatarama Honore ho karamena Taramena ho anataramana Kona te ramaya Aloha Aloha Mahalo Thank you for stepping into that space so beautifully. Mm. And why don't you give us a last song of yours if the technology gods may play with us? Yes. I'm already thinking in my thinking mind next time the things I'll do so that <laughs> you can hear the tones perhaps more. I thank you. Yes, here's what's coming through. Once upon a time. There were many stars. In a dark black sky. But they didn't realize that they were in apparent darkness because each had remembered how to shine their brightness so fully that colors of their light began to make a sound. And in the fullness of their rainbow colors and their heart songs that they sang freely as they wished, when they wished, as much as they wished, and only when they wished, they were unaware that there were beings below on Holua, on Earth, who were looking to them and filling their hearts with this rainbow light and hearing their songs and seeing them each individual points of light in what looked like mostly darkness. 
And you may find yourself in this story as the rainbow singing star or as the one looking up into what seems like a diamond-filled darkness or maybe as the song or maybe as one of these colors. And wherever you are in the story or if you're not even in the story, just know that you're right on track. It takes all of us and what the stars have now come to realize as we come to the end of this little tale or maybe just the end of this chapter is that there is both darkness in the light and light in the darkness and that we are never alone because we have it all. And we have ability to share this with each other in ways that makes more joy than any of us in our own individual star hearts can even fathom right now. So thank you for being on this journey with me toward wherever each of us is going. Thank you for making this cosmic appointment in this here now moment. Even if you rewind this and you hear in this here now moment again, as you hear that, we are together and I'm in such bliss. Yes, how beautiful. So mahalo, kofu, and mahalo to all of those who are with us in whatever time it is. And we will be back because we have just begun, just like all of you. So for now, we will see you and mahalo. <laughs>